So, Green Meter Square, it is a citizen science initiative. It's about engaging the community, schools, EWI groups, families with their local shorelines. We're encouraging people to go down to the shore and um, have a look at what's living there. Um, we launched the project um, in 2013 for the Rocky Shore, and then we added protocols for the Sandy and Muddy Shore last year. Um, it's a nationwide project, um, and it's very much in the development stage. So I keep saying it's a pilot project, and so we really value your input and ideas. Um, so when we set up the projects, as I said, our objectives were to get people down onto the shore, onto their local shore, and look what's living there. And there's nothing like putting down a window or a meter squared area to make you look more closely. We wanted them to actually collect data, valuable data, um, about biodiversity, distribution, abundance of the, the animals and plants found on the shore. And we want, the key, key to the project is not just doing it once, but doing it over time, so that we can monitor change and investigate what might be causing that change. And we were very keen to set up networks between scientists, between community groups, between schools, EWI. Now we're hopeful that the project has value, value to science. Obviously scientists can't get to every little nook and cranny of the shore, so this is valuable data collection across time and space. But we also felt that, felt that there was great value for the participants. Um, we wanted to increase the awareness and knowledge and understanding of coastal ecosystems and, and science in general. We wanted to generate engagement and interest in their local environment. We wanted to develop science skills. We wanted to develop positive attitudes towards the environment and hopefully change behaviors that might be having negative impacts on the environment. Um, and as Monica said, when you're setting up projects like this, I think it's really important to think about who the project's for and what the objectives are. There were, there were three main groups that we um, wanted to, to work with. Um, obviously, scientists are quite key. Now, scientists have specific questions, they have specific protocols, if that data is going to be of value to, to research or to decision making. Um, and these, these Methods can often be quite prescribed and quite technical. We also wanted to engage with schools, and this we felt was our opportunity to engage with youth, um, to reach a cross-section of the community. But could the project fit within the, the, the school curriculum? Um, could it fit uh, within the school day? Those were questions we had to ask. And we also wondered whether we could use it to, to, to go push beyond um, the scope of knowledge and skill development. Could we get the students to engage in some real science issues and decision making and opportunity to use their science? And we're also concerned about the community and place can also be a really important driver for some of these um, citizen science type projects. Um, so we wanted to know whether we could engage interest among the communities and nurture and grow that interest and, and encourage them to take um, responsibility for the future of the local, local shoreline. So who's involved in the Green Meter Square project? We have almost a thousand people that have registered on, onto the website and I was, I'm quite pleased that we, uh, almost 60% are from the North Island and 25% from Auckland, which I was really impressed with. Um, so definitely schools are engaging, uh, we've got individuals, families, community groups, and tertiary groups. We started the project really by developing resources for that, that train. Um, our, you've probably seen our Rocky Shore guys, and if you look in your, um, in your bag, there is one for the Sandy and Muddy Shore. These have been incredibly popular. We've printed over 180,000 copies of this novel, um, and they've been translated into Taleo, and, and we're continually updating them. We set up a website, and our website has background information. It's got some little videos about what happens when the tide comes in and how to do the project. We've set up mechanisms to help with identification, uh, survey protocols, the data sheets you can download, curriculum links. Um, teachers were saying to us that they go down to the shore, they've been going to the same shore over, over 10 years um, with, their, with their classes, they've seen the shoreline change, but they haven't kept the data. 
So we felt that the website was a really important data storage system um, and also an opportunity for them to share that data. So what's involved? Um, I keep saying it's really easy and it's free. <laughs> Um, all you need is a meter squared area, put it down onto the shore, and count and identify the plants and animals found within. Really key to the project, though, is uploading that data onto the website so that other people can um, see and use the data. And the, what else is important is that they actually look at the data. That it, it's not just about uploading the data and that's job done. We want them to look at the data and question the data. So what does it mean? What are they finding? Um, what does it mean in comparison to other regions? So, so to start asking questions and think about where they might find the answers to the questions. And for some of those questions, they might be able to look at other data on the website. For other questions, it might involve further sampling or, or developing and designing more detailed investigations. And that's where the scientists might be. We encourage schools and, and groups to also critique the evidence. So how, how accurate was the counting? Um, how good was their identification? We use that standardized methods. We're encouraging groups to use standardized methods so that they can easily compare the data. Um, we set up a blog site so that they can take photos and upload the data, or upload photos to help with identifications. And we actually get the users to rate their scientific competency. So this project, we're encouraging um, five-year-olds to participate as well as scientists to participate. So on the site, they can indicate whether they feel scientifically competent or maybe um, they're, they're, they're just beginners. And hopefully over time, that they, they will feel more confidence in the data collection and, and that scientific competency will go up. Um, on the data site, we all, or on the website, we're also starting to develop data analysis tools so that they can actually um, look at other people's data, look at where surveys are being conducted, look at where um, you find different species. So the big candy crab, um, until about a year ago, I thought was an orthodox species, but um, we're now, now that we're looking a bit closer, we're finding it down in the Indian region. They can also compare the results over time and compare the results with other regions. So there's various graphing capacity, so you have to get on the site and have a look. So what's the value of the project? <clears throat> well, there's, there's great value to schools in being able to engage in, in, in a local issue, an environmental issue, develop networks with scientists, with their community. It's, it's providing them with a local focus um, for those environmental issues. It fits really well into the nature of science, uh, strand that participa participating and contributing to science, and the science capabilities for citizenship. Supports the front end of the curriculum, things like future so focused and community <laughs> engagement. And in secondary, um, we actually have a project with um, specific assessment units. What's the value to science? Well, baseline data, of course, is really important in environmental monitoring. Um, being able to track things like the, the spread and impact of invasive species, um, looking at distribution of species in terms of habitats and range. And, and, and how that distribution might change with things like climate change. We would expect to see a, 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 an extension of the southern distribution of many species as, as the waters get warmer. And it also allows us to capture some of that traditional value of community knowledge. So we've been, been asking scientists some, what are the more specific questions that they want to answer. Because we feel that the Marine Beach Square project um, is now starting to train a group of of citizens that they can then maybe go with more detailed uh, protocols. So some of the scientists said, oh, well, they're interested where you find recruitments of cockles. So where do you find cockles more, less than a millimeter in size? Easy to measure, easy to identify. Citizens can add value. This starfish, the, the four plus four starfish, really common in Otago Harbor, has been reported as, as having a, a New Zealand-wide distribution, but our scientists haven't found it anywhere else. Um, and that's something that the community can contribute to. These little ghost strip, they have a, a little mound um, and a crater that marks the borough entrance and exit. Um, real variations in the population structure um, down in our area. Is that natural? We don't know. 
these, uh, these are stargazers, and what we were putting together, the shore guide, um, I sent the, the photos to Martin Francis at Niwa to just get him to check that I had the right species. And he said, no, 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 I have this one, the bandit one, on the, on the guide. He said, no, it should be the spotter. And I said, really? Um, but that's the one we find on our shores. And he said, well, actually, I haven't looked at your shores. I don't know. You know so that an indication of how we can add value. This is a blog post that was put up by Niwa about stocked jellyfish. They're tiny. They're exactly the same color as the, as the seaweed they live on. We're finding them in tide pools around Wellington. Where else are they? We don't know. The project can also add real value to community, to community issues. It's, it's, it, having data gives communities a voice to address some of those community concerns. Um, it's developing local knowledge and, and, and tools that communities can use, and hopefully will lead to networks that can facilitate community action. Down in Dunedin, um, our port company is wanting to increase the amount of dredging in the Otago Harbor, in the channel, wanting to dump the dredge spoil just offshore. The communities north of Dunedin are very concerned that that is going to result in an increase in sedimentation on the shore. To affect the seaweed growth, affect the, the power populations. So we've actually got schools north of Dunedin monitoring the shoreline. And there is a clause in the resource that can, can send that says if change is detected, they have to stop dredging. So that's really powerful for schools. Um, Atag is one of the few areas where we don't have a marine reserve. So at the moment, there's lots of consultation going around, along, around um, where, where a marine reserve might be placed. And schools and communities, or, uh, local, little local communities, if they have information about their shoreline, what's unique, or, or maybe you know, that it's not, uh, that it is degraded, they can actually feed into that process. They've got some data behind them. So with the Marine Meter Square, one of our big challenges is to move the project beyond that in donation. So we're really interested in how we develop real citizen engaged inquiry. And most of the citizen science projects are what we call contributory in nature. So that's where the scientists, it's shown in the black lines, the scientists are asking the questions, providing the protocols, and the citizens then donate the data, and the scientists do the analysis and the sharing of the results. What we're interested in is how we move the project to more of a co-creative project where the communities and schools are also involved in, in asking the question and developing the methods and also involved in analyzing the results and sharing the results. So that's a big challenge and I think the Marine Meter Squared project is the first step in this process. So as, as Monica mentioned, the, the government has come up with a strategy called the Mission of Curious Minds. And, and I think citizen science is a, um, an overarching action within this document. And I think projects like Marine Meter Square really can contribute. It, it is really about getting people down um, onto the shore or into the environment um, to awaken curiosity. I mean, I, I go down to the beach all the time and I'm always finding something new. The Marine Meter Square project were really about providing tools to, um, for participants to gain understanding and skills to engage in meaningful science. So as I say, it's the first stage. Um, it's to get, give people some background knowledge and, and um, to get them asking questions. It's really hard to engage with scientists and engage with decision makers if you don't have any background knowledge or, or if you haven't been in the environment. I think though, developing projects, you have to look at what, are, what is the motivation of the citizen and what is the motivation of the scientist, and there needs to be some common ground. We're interested in what are the critical components, so how do you develop a project um, that's going to lead to citizen engaged inquiry? So um, with the Marine Meter Square project, it's, it's all about long-term engagement, and what do we do to keep groups engaged in doing that long-term data collection? that leads to improved science understanding, both for the citizen and for the scientists. And, and we certainly need further research on how to develop effective partnerships um, and sustain those partnerships. So as I said, it's a work in progress. <laughs>
<laughs> and um, we've had lots of support from various organizations. But um, I, I really value your input and ideas. And as I said, after morning tea, we'll go down and we'll get the project to go and uh, um, we'll, we'll show you that the website and how to, how to upload the data. Thank you. Thank you.